Hi everyone, happy Monday. Today I'm doing a question and answer on the topic of special immigrant juvenile status. Um, I have received some questions. Please let me know you're here. Send your comments in and ask your questions in the comments and I'm happy to answer them. So the first thing I wanna answer is what is special immigrant juvenile status or SIJS? So SIJS is a form of relief for certain immigrant children and there are specific eligibility requirements. But the good thing about this process is that it can ultimately lead to getting a green card. And we'll go through the process a little bit later. But um, the eligibility requirements for SIJ are that the child is under 21 years old, is not married, and has suffered abuse, abandonment, or neglect by either one of their parents in their country of origin, and that it's not a viable option for them to return to their country, and it's in their best interest to be in the United States. One of the important things to keep in mind about this is that the findings against the parents only have to be against one parent. So if there's a parent who's non-offending, the only defendant named in this is the offending parent. Um, who qualifies? So you have to be under 21 and unmarried. That's very important. And you also have to get these findings of eligibility from the family and probate court. So this process is a little tricky because it's split between probate and family court and the immigration process. So there's generally three steps. The first step is getting findings in the, in the probate and family court. The second step is getting the visa application in. And the third step is the green card application. This isn't always the way it goes. And I'll talk about a couple of different scenarios. So first I wanna to touch on what happens in probate and family court. So the reason that probate and family court has the ability or are required to make these decisions are because historically they are making decisions in court about the best interests of a child and they're working with state definitions of abuse, abandonment and neglect. And so immigration has tasked them with making these findings. So when we're going into probate and family court, there's a couple of way that, ways that we can get these findings. And some of the ways we've done it are through custody petitions, divorce proceedings, child support um, petitions, and what else? Oh, guardianships are a big one. But, uh, and we've also done them in the past through these things called equity petitions. Now, in 2018, Governor Baker signed into law a new section called 39M, and this is specific to these types of cases. So before, if a kid was unable to get um, their status through the custody or the divorce petitions or guardianship because they were over 18, they would apply for something called an equity petition. And equity petitions are basically, if there's no other way through the law that you can get some relief, then you could do it through the equity petition. But now with the 39M section, there's um, this section is specifically for children who are trying to get these SIJS findings, the special findings in probate and family court. And it has definitions of what a child is, what being dependent on the court is, and so forth. So whatever manner of petition that the case is going to go forward in the family and probate court, um, then you have to file whatever petition that is with the family and probate court, and you have to do something called um, service on the defendant. And once you have your service on the defendant, then the court will schedule you for a hearing. You go before a judge, and hopefully you get your order that has the findings of fact that you need. Now, the second part of the process is taking these findings of fact and then filing them with the USCS, US Citizenship and Immigration Services. And there's a special visa application, an I-360 for special immigrant visas. 
And the uh, special immigrant juveniles are one of the types of special immigrants in this visa process. With the I-360, we include the order from the court and the child's um, proof that they're under 21 and they're unmarried. So then USCIS will decide that petition. Um, and then the last step is the green card. Now this is where there's different processes. So if the kid is in removal proceedings, meaning in immigration court, then the green card process is through the court because the court has the authority to grant the green card. Um, if the kid is not in immigration court proceedings, they might be able to file the visa application and the green card application at the same time. However, there are limits on the children from Central America and Mexico in the visa bulletin. And so these cases can drag on for years before they are eligible to apply for the green card. Um, I did want to, uh, I can't do it. I wanted to share the screen so I could show you guys the visa bulletin, but um, basically there's a certain category in there and you have to check the date that you have versus the date that you can file the green card. And it's a little bit tricky, but you can send me an email later if you want more information about that. And then um, I have another question. How long does this process take? So it really depends on uh, how quickly you get scheduled for court, how quickly you get your order, and whether or not you are subject to this limit with a visa bulletin. If you aren't subject to the limit and you're not in removal proceedings, then it's the fastest. If you're subject to uh, the limit and you're in removal proceedings, then it's going to be a lot slower. So for right now, the kids that are uh, Central American who have visas that are approved, they're waiting about four years for them to be able to file for the green card. So this process can be really long and very frustrating, but it has good results at the end generally. And the next question I have is, can I get married? So for these cases, once you get the order from the probate and family court, the visa application requires that you be unmarried and under 21. So I advise all of my clients not to get married until they get their green card so they don't mess up their cases. Um, and can I have a baby? So having a child doesn't preclude someone from being eligible for the special immigrant juvenile status visa. And can I file a petition for my parents? So this is one of the downfalls of these types of cases is that even if one of the parents didn't abuse you, unfortunately, if you do get an SIJS status, then you are unable to apply for either of your parents. So it's really important that everybody knows going into this that if you get status, you cannot apply for any of your parent, uh, either of your parents anytime in the future. Um, another question I get a lot is can I get a work permit? So this is another frustrating issue with the kids that are subject to the limit. So for the Central American kids who are subject to the limit for these visas, um, it's the answer is generally no, unless there's another type of case pending. So in order to be able to apply for a work permit, a person needs to have some other case that makes them eligible to apply for the work permit. The I-360 alone does not make someone eligible for the work permit. And sometimes these cases will be filed also with uh, an asylum application. And with an asylum application, someone would be eligible to apply. But if it's only an SIJ case and there's no other petition with it, then they're not able to apply for the work permit. Um, if they have the uh, opportunity to apply for the SIJ and the 485, the, the green card application at the same time, then they can get the work permit through the green card application. So I hear a lot of times, my cousin or so-and-so 
has their work permit? Why don't I have my work permit? And it's important to remember everybody's case is different and you need to have an analysis of your case in order to learn whether or not you're eligible to apply for the work permit too. And I understand that's very frustrating, uh, especially for the kids looking to go to college and get financial aid and get their driver's licenses and so forth. But it's a long process and you kind of just have to hang in there for it. And I got, what is the visa bulletin? So I wanna talk a little bit more about the visa bulletin. So every month, the Department of State issues what's called the visa bulletin. And there are different categories to let people know when they're able to apply for their green card or their adjustment of status. And for the SIJ cases, this category is EB4, which is employment-based fourth preference category. And that lumps in these special immigrant visas. And on that chart, there's um, two sections that separate out the, the places that have limits. One of them is Central America, so Guatemala, and El Salvador, and Honduras. And the other one with limits is Mexico. And I am assuming that this is because there was a huge surge of people coming from Central America. And this is just a way to limit them, of course. So um, you have to look at those specific countries in the EB4. And when you apply for the SIJS visa, you'll receive a receipt notice. And in one section, there's something called your priority date. And that priority date is the date that USCIS received your case. And that priority date, you have to look for a date in that specific category of the visa bulletin for it to be that date or past that date in order to be eligible for the green card process. So it's frustrating and it's moving very, very slowly, but it's good to know every, um, every month there's a new bulletin out. So just keep checking the visa bulletins to see if your priority date is what we call current on there and um, check in with your attorney and see where we are. Now, the fiscal year of like, they release 10,000 visas per year for the SIJ cases. And on that bulletin, uh, the fiscal year begins in October. So we're not gonna see a lot of movement until next October when they release more visas for the next fiscal year. Miraculously, this month, it actually moved an entire month, which it hadn't moved for several months and I was very surprised. So you never really know what's gonna happen with that. But based on what's going on right now, it's taking about four years for a case to become current for the kids that have the limit, especially in um, Central America. Uh, the one for Mexico is a little bit more generous. Um, and then, what if I turn 21 after I file my I-360 application for SIJ status? So the important thing to remember here is you just have to get the application in before you turn 21, even if it's literally the day before you turn 21, it's okay. Um, it doesn't matter if you turn 21 after you file the application because the requirement is just that you file before you turn 21. So there's no need to worry about that. I had a case last December and we went in three days before his 21st birthday into the probate and family court. We got the order and then we overnighted the I-360 application to USCIS and the case was accepted and it's processing. So no need to worry if you turn 21 after your case is filed. And, um, then I want to talk a little bit about the new law. I know I mentioned it before. Um, the, this is a 39M, and that was uh, signed into law on July 1st, 2018, in Massachusetts. And it uh, provided so much clarification on these types of cases in the court. Before this, there were some judges that did not want to issue these findings. And there were a lot of cases at the Supreme Judicial Court in Massachusetts arguing about what the judges had to do. And now with this new law, everything is clear across the board. 
I remember um, earlier on, several years ago, when I would go to different diff different counties. I've been to pretty much all of the counties um, in central Mass and towards eastern Mass and northern and southern Massachusetts. And you never really knew exactly what was going to happen. Most of the judges were okay with this and understood the process, but there were some judges that refused to issue these orders. And so now it's mandated that they do have to issue an order. Uh, whether they grant it or deny it, they have to issue an order. And there's a lot more education on this process. So Massachusetts is a good state for, for this. Um, and also, what else? Um, that's pretty much it. Does anyone have any questions? Um, I don't know if I'm seeing the comments, but anyway, it's a really great option for young people here in the United States who just, um, and, and a lot of people don't know about it. So I think it's important if anybody watching is an educator or a community leader to make sure that the juveniles in your your uh, community are aware that this might be an option for them. And also the courts can um, offer referrals to social work type of assistance with, um, you know, educational support and so forth. So it's a really great thing that we have here. Um, and, I am working on one of those cases today, and I hope to talk to you all soon. I'll be doing another Facebook Live. I'm thinking about the next topic, but if you have anything that you want to hear about, please let me know. If you want to hear it in a different language, let me know. I speak Spanish, so I'm happy to provide that resource for everyone as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope everyone has a great day.